And here we go guys, question 5. So, the time taken for a randomly selected person to complete a test is m minutes, where m is normally distributed between 14 and sigma squared. So this is mean 14 and variance sigma squared. Given that 10% of people take less than 12 minutes, so note this down, to complete a test, find the value of sigma. So first things first, we need to write on what we know. So since we know that the property that the number of minutes was less than 12, we know that this was this represented 10% of people. In other words, this can also be written as 0 0.100 if we looked at the normal distribution table. Now all we have to do firstly is convert this part of the left side to the standard normal. So that, that's basically the z part. So we can say z is less than 12 minus the mean, which is 14, over this, the standard deviation, which is sigma. Okay, and again, this is equal to 0 0.1000. Now, what do you do from here? Well, the problem with this table is that this only records um, values from 50% onwards. Because if you go back to the normal distribution table, we can see that if we look at the property values, because inside the Z is the property values, is these ones. They start from 0 0.5 and go all the way up to 1. So technically, we need to find the, the reverse value. That is the, the 1 minus value. So if we go back again, in order, to, in order to work this out, we can also take it like this. If we take 1 minus on both sides, we'll have the same expression, except now this will be 1 minus this, so it'll be 0 0.9000. And yes, this can be picked up. And a cool property of normal distribution if, is that if you've got 1 minus the probability, and you can put this, cross as 1 minus and put this inside as a negative. So this can be written as the probability that z is less than the negative of 12 minus 14 over sigma equals 0 0.9000. And yes, this actually works. So if you were to do this, now we can actually equate this to whatever the 0 0.9000 figure is. So going back to the table, the closest property to 0 0.9000, so have a look at this term here. We can see it falls between here, so actually it's close to 1.28. That's very close. So we can say immediately that all of this equals 1.28, about 1.28. And now we just solve this and find sigma. So we can now say, therefore, minus and then 12 minus 14 over sigma must equal 1.28. And now we just have to resolve this. So multiplying sigma across and then times in the minus across, we should have minus 12 plus 14 equals 1.28 sigma. This reduces to 2 equals 1.28 sigma. And simply dividing 1.28 across, and you should get about oh, sigma equals 25 over 16. But it's best to keep the answer as a, as a decimal because we're working in minutes. So we can't really use a fraction. So we can say approximately, well, actually 1.5625 minutes. And that's it. That's part A wrapped up. Okay, part B now. So Graham selects 15 people at random. Find the probability that fewer than two of these people will take less than 12 minutes to complete a test. Now, first things first, we know that we have a, um, a new sample size of 15. So again, this could be normal or binomial. However, how do we know that this is binomial? One, it's because we're talking about people. We're talking strictly on integer values because you can't have 50, you can't afford two point something people. We have it specifically two people. So we know straight away that this is going to be now a binomial distribution with n equal to 15, but we need to figure out p is. We can ignore this statement. This is just a distribution where we had the m1 from the previous question, which was here, where m was represented as minutes. This is the time taken. And this statement here, less than 12 minutes to complete this, this is the proportion we're talking about. We're talking about 10% of the people. Again, we're, we're talking about people in this case. So in our, our p value would actually be 10%. So when you have a question like this, always try and figure out what the proportion is. Now we know it will be 15 and 10% or 0 0.10. So now we can answer the question. So find property that fewer than two of these people. So property X is fewer than two. Now, thankfully, we have this in our edX or binomial table. So this can be rewritten as properties X, property that X is less than or equal to one. Remember, this represents every, um, when X is either zero or x equals 1, but not 2. So technically, it's the same as that. Now, all we do is simply go to the binomial table. So open it up over here. And simply find um, when n is 15. 
go all the way down and when x was uh, when probability was 10 percent so p equals 10 0 0.10 and we just find uh, 1 so and actually his answer will simply be 0 0.5 90. It's 5490. And that's it. So where is the thing? So it'd be this would be equal to 5490. Very straightforward. Just be very careful how to model it as a binomial, not as a normal. And that's it. All done. Part C. So let's have a look. Giovanna takes a random sample of n people. Okay, so instead of the previous one we had 15 people, so now we've got n. Using a normal approximation. So this is converting either binomial or Poisson to normal, but this is likely going to be binomial. The property that fewer than nine of these n people from the sample will take less than 12 minutes to complete the test, and that is given to equal 0.3085. Find the number of people. Well, first things first, we're looking at a distribution which features less than 12 minutes. We know this by now. This is the one uh, the, from the given that statement where we know that 10% of these people take less than 12 minutes. So we know the proportion is 10% or 0 0.1, 0 0.10. And because we have a sample of n people now, we can say straight away that this new distribution, let's call it y, we would follow a binomial with firstly n people and 0 0.10 pro probability or proportion. Now, how to convert this to a normal? It's very straightforward. Firstly, all we need is, um, let's say this, we need to find the, the mean, which is simply for binomial n times p and we need the variance which is simply from binomial n times p times q or you might you might see as np times 1 minus p it's just the leftover so what do we have here so this means straight away that mean is going to be n times this which is 0.1n and multiplying the the next one to find the variance n times 0.1 times 1 minus 0.1 will give us 0.09n and that's our literal normal distribution now. So we can finally say that y is now normally distributed with a mean of 0.1n and a variance of um, 0.09n. The standard deviation would be the square root of that, by the way. So, almost done, guys, almost done. One thing to note, when you're using a normal approximation, notice how the binomial only takes integer values yeah so if it said less than fewer than nine it could refer to less than equal eight however if it's a normal distribution it's continuous so fewer than nine is same as less than equal nine however when we take that into account because we have now probability under binomial less than nine is equal to less than or equal eight for normal approximation we have to take a uh, continuity error or correction in this case. So it would be, I mean, personally, I always use the midpoint. So I'll say, therefore, under normal approximation, I would say probability that y is less than the, the, mid, the midpoint, which is 8.5. The reason why we do this is that we just want to have a safe assumption. Okay? That's really it. So where are we now? So find probability that fewer than nine of these n people will take less than 12 minutes, blah, blah. And we know that this property equals 0 0.3085. Equals 0 0.3085. So we're almost done. Now we just convert this to the usual Z format. So let's have a look. So standard normal, here we come. So it'll be less than 8.5 minus the mean, which is 0.1n over the standard deviation. So it'll be the square root of the variance. So root 0.09n. And all of this must equal 0 0.3085. Now you can see where we're coming here. Here we now need to find a certain z value from our table that will make this equal to this probability. Well, as we always know, according to the normal distribution table, so let me just scroll up to it. Mm, right here. The properties begin from 0 0.5 and end to 1. So technically, we need to firstly find the reverse order. So we need to find 1 minus this. Or what we could do is uh, find 1 minus both sides and then we'll find the other side the right hand side so let's have a look so we can say if you one minus both sides, or just stick in a nice negative sign here this will automatically change this to one minus this this variable literally that's a nice way so if you stick a minus sign here it will be one minus this probability which is equal to uh, 3085 0 0.6915 and that's it guys all you do now is find this probability on the table and then equate all of this to that 
So do, going back to that table, where did I put it? 6915. Oof, takes a lot of work, you know. <laughs> ah, so equals 0 0.50. 0 0.50. That's perfect, actually. Nice. Now you just solve for n. Oof. All right, so I just need a little breather here. So now we need to equate all of this 0 0.50, so let's do it. So we can say, let me see, blue pen. So minus 8.5 minus 0.1n over the square root of 0.09n must be equal to 0 0.50. So just to make life easy, just put the minus sign on the other side. So I would cross this minus sign and put it here, just to make the math easy. Multiply this um, fraction across. So the bottom term, so we have 8.5 minus 0.1n equals minus 0.50 and then root 0.09n. Just to make your life easy as well, just um, partition this one so it looks a bit like uh, root 0.09 times root n. So you can do that with thirds. And just multiply that head on, the third part, with minus 0.50. And you guys should get 0.09. Uh, minus 0 0.15 so all of this becomes minus 0 0.15 root n okay and what do we do from here so this is not very obvious to tell but you would have to kind of this actually this actually becomes a quadratic equation how do we know so we've got n and root n if we just say on the side yeah you know let um, poof, x equal root n if you square both sides, you have x squared equals n. So it's putting that back in, we have something like 8.5 minus 0.1x squared, because n is x squared, minus 0.15x. And voila, guys, here's our quadratic. So now putting now rearranging, rearranging this to the usual format. So let's put it down here for a second. So we should have, oof, let me see. So that's plus 0 0.1 squared across and subtract 8.5. So we should have 0.1x squared minus 0.15x uh, minus 8.5. Yep. Yep, looks okay. Yeah, and then just using the quadratic formula. So I've already gone ahead and solved it anyway. And using the quadratic formula, you should have exactly... So yeah, just, just to be clear, using, it should be uh, minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. Standard procedure, where a is 0 0.1, b is minus 0 0.15, and c is minus 8.5. Plug in the calculator, you should get about 10. Ignore the negative answer, because you want a whole value. Or you should have another answer, but stick with the 10. And then squaring this. You should eventually get x squared, which is, of course, 100. And yeah, and that's it. And then since x squared is 100, well, n is clearly 102, since x squared is n. And that's it, guys. Ooh. Yeah, and that's it. I hope this, this helped. And uh, let me know if you've got any questions, yeah?